Hi, good people. My name is Titus, and today we're going to be talking about two techniques around death and respawn handling that you'll be able to implement in some of your own projects. So I have a basic third person template here. I have two blueprints. I have a kill cam blueprint, a target blueprint. There's no code in them whatsoever. Um, and then I also have a Niagara death particle system here. So let's jump into the um, third person blueprint character here. Um, one other special call out is I am going to be using ragdoll physics. So let me go ahead and hide myself real quick. If we go into the character mesh here and look under the uh, collision, I have the collision preset set to ragdoll. So if you're going to be using ragdoll, you will need that as well. Uh, but we have some custom code here. Um, we have two keyboard events, number one, number two. When I push number one, it calls method one. When I push number two, it calls method two. We have yet to define these custom events. Um, so method one um, will be creating a new instance of this character blueprint. So we'll basically create another Quinn. We'll then possess Quinn and we'll delete the old Quinn. Uh, method two is basically reusing the same instance over and over again. We simply basically hide Quinn so the, the player can't see him. Uh, and then we teleport them and then we uh, basically unhide them and give control back. So uh, these are going to be basically the, the two methods here. Uh, so going over the first one, uh, I'm going to first get a reference to my character mesh. And I'm going to pull off that and do a set simulate physics. Set that to true. And then I need to set the movement mode. I'm using the character movement script so I can hold control, pull off that and adjust a parameter called the set movement mode. I'm going to set the movement mode to be none so the player cannot move. And just with that, if we compile and actually play, if I push the number one, we'll see the character falls down. I'm showing the capsule collider so you can actually see where the player actually is and then we can't move around. So we effectively have some death state here, but we have no respawn. Uh, and we also are not switching to our kill camera. Uh, so let's actually pull off this into a delay. We'll let the player look at the uh, character for about two seconds. We then want to play, uh, I'm using a special effects. So I'm going to get a reference to my character mesh. Pull off that and do a set material. And if we look at Quinn, Quinn currently has uh, two material slots, an element zero and an element one. So I'm going to duplicate this code. I'm going to target element one on this one and element zero on this one. And I'm gonna set the special effect to be my MI dissolved material instance that I've created. And this could be whatever special effect you want to use for your death animations. It doesn't matter. This is optional. Uh, and then for my special effects, I'm going to create a timeline. Call my timeline. And I'm actually going to drag this into play from start. And then I can uh, drag in the update function into a set scalar parameter value created a material parameter uh, collection called data set with a value of dissolved and then I need to pass in the dissolve amount so if I double click my timeline I'm going to create a two second timeline my dissolve amount is going to be a float value it's gonna have two keys it's gonna be starting at time zero it's gonna be a value of one and then uh, it's going to be at time two, I have a value of negative one. So it's a simple, just little graph like that. And then I can pass my dissolve amount into my parameter value. And this is just for the special effects, so that's kind of just optional. Once I'm finished, I'm going to go into a get actor of class. And I want to search for my kill cam. And then off the kill cam, we can do what's called a um, set view target with blend. If you don't see it, you might have to uncheck contact sensitive and it should show up for you. Now the return value of the kill cam is going to be the new view target. I want this to happen over one second. The 
current target is going to be a reference to the player controller. It will not work if you use player state, so make sure you check context sensitive on and use the game state player controller. Then my custom code I've created at the top is called spawn. And just so you can see what that looks like, it's basically more of the same. I'm just kind of going, I'm reverting the uh, material instance back to the, the Quinn value. So the player looks, uh, doesn't look dissolved basically. All right. And actually before we do this, um, let's break this here. So we set the view to be the kill camera. Let's actually come into a delay and wait on the kill cam for, yeah, we'll say two seconds. And then after we wait two seconds, let's spawn a new instance of Quinn. So we'll do spawn actor from class. The class we're gonna use is BP underscore third person character. We can split the spawn transform. So we have access to the location and we need to figure out how to pass in this location value. Um, so what we can do is we can create a variable called location or simply lock, set it to a vector. And then if I just want to be simple, I can just hard code it. Um, there is a player start here, which is this little capsule cube thing. And it's right above my target. I can just right click the location, copy it go back into here and then for the location value I can just right click paste and then I'm just hard coding the value just to make this example simple and then I can drag this into the spawn transform location so it passes that value in there now once we've spawned the actor we will want to pass the view from the kill cam back to the actor so we can actually just reuse this code right here Control D to duplicate it over here. Except the new view target is going to be our new Quinn. And we can still do that blend time over one second. And then after we spawn the view into new Quinn, then I want to play my particle effect. Uh, to be able to do this though, I do need to pass in, uh, because the spawn instance is going to be on the new Quinn, we don't want to trigger it on the old Quinn. So we can use this value over here. And then I can just drag a reroute node to make that easier. After I play the effect, I maybe want to wait maybe a second or two. And then I'll want to call into the possess. If you don't see possess, you'll want to uncheck contact sensitive and then the possess function should show up. Now the current target needs to be the player controller. So get player controller. And again, we can't use the player state, so make sure you check this and use the game state version of player controller. And the in pawn is gonna be the new instance of Quinn. So I can simply add another reroute node. So we're pulling off the one that we spawned. Now that we spawned the new Quinn, uh, we've set the camera back to the new Quinn. We possess the new Quinn. We are probably good to delete the old Quinn. So we can just simply call destroy actor and it will destroy everything in this instance. And that is the completed method one. So if we play this and I go over and just push one, you can see I can't move. Quinn disappears. I go to my kill cam and then I go to a new instance of Quinn. If I push shift F1, we come out of this, let's go back to our third person map, and you can see third person character number one. Let's actually see what's going on here. So if I move into here and I push one, Quinn dies, it should spawn character number two. And there's character number two and character number one gets deleted as you can see in the inspector. And then I keep doing this, you know, you should see BP third person character three get spawned. And then BP third person character two will get deleted. So we're basically getting new instances of Quinn each time. This is certainly one way to handle death in your prototypes. But let's look in the other method here. So go back to our code. 
and this is going to be method two. Uh, we're going to need to use my uh, Niagara system. So I have my special effects death I created here. I'm going to add that to my components tree as a Niagara particle system. And I'm going to turn the auto activate to off so this thing doesn't just pop right when it spawns in. And I'm going to get a reference to my particle system and my mesh, or my mesh. Hold control, drag them both out. Although I only got the one. There we go. I can pull off my mesh, and the way I'm going to handle this one is I will just use the function set hidden in game. So we're basically just simply hiding the mesh. And then I can play my particle system. So we'll do set active. And then we'll do a new activate there. And then like we did before, I can copy the character movement and duplicate this. And we're gonna set the character movement to be none. So the character can't move around. And then I can copy this delay so we can basically kill the character, make it wait two seconds. So the player just sees that the player died. And then we can call into the get actor of class we will, of course, get a reference to our kill camera. And then from the kill camera, we're going to do what we did before, which is going to be the set view target with blend. Although, I don't know why that didn't copy there. Control D. All right, I guess it won't let me copy it for some reason. So set view target. Uncheck this. And then the return value will be the new view target. I'm going to do this across one second and then this target is going to be get player controller but the game instance one and then I can maybe I can copy this delay if it'll let me do that perfect all right and then after we wait the two seconds here uh, we want to basically teleport our character so an easy way to do that is we can get a reference to the capsule component, which you can see it's right here. Everything lives inside this root component here, this capsule component. So it kind of makes the most sense. I can just drag a reference holding control and then I can do set world location. Pass this in here. The new location of course is our spawn point, which we've already defined in a variable called lock or location. And then we need to set the camera to be uh, the player character. So we can, uh, I don't think it's gonna let me duplicate. It doesn't let me duplicate that one, interesting. Okay, we'll just pull off into set view target with blend. Now the new view target um, is gonna be a little bit different here. So we'll first get our player controller, game instance one. Now the new view target is going to be the same instance of this blueprint. So we'll pull off this and do a reference to self. And then I'm going to use the same one second uh, blend time. And I can reuse my function for my special effect that I used before for spawn. And I do not need to pass in a uh, target because this is reusing the same blueprint. So the reference to self will not hurt us in any way. And then the last two things I need to do is I need to unhide the character mesh, which is what we did in this one. And I need to return the movement back to the character. So we can press control D, duplicate that over here. But instead of hiding the mesh, we will set it to false. So it's not hidden. And then we will set the new movement mode to actually be walking. There you have it, you got two methods uh, for handling death and respawn. So now if we compile and play this, I should be able to press two and then my player died. I go to my kill cam, I can't move. And then my player respawns and I'm back over here. If I press, or press one, that actually ragdolls me out, kills Quinn, instantiates a new Quinn and then we, uh, we're basically off to the races with the new Quinn. All 
All right, everyone, I think we'll cut it here to keep the video short, but I hope you found some informative value that you can take into your own projects. But as always, thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and we'll see you on the next one.